Please sit down. Most of the religions in the world have made music a part of their ceremonies. They sing, they play musical instruments, they play bells. Sometimes the buildings are constructed where there is a belfry and they put on bells. It's just a copy of a real temple. The real temple is our own head. The real church, the real synagogue, the real mosque is our own head. Everything that is written in the scriptures of different religions relates to this. Everything that we are trying to do in an artificial building built by us is already existing in a temple built by the Creator in a human body. This small part of the body above the eyes contains everything that we have to seek. It contains the Creator. It contains the creation. It contains the self. It contains the experiencer at all levels. In a human form, when we think inside this head, we can become a seeker and seek anything and we can find it all inside. We have questions, all the answers are inside. We want to seek the truth, truth is inside. We want to seek a higher level of awareness, it's inside. We want to seek salvation, it's inside. We want to see the past, it's inside. We want to see the future, it's inside. There's nothing one can conceive which is not inside us. And yet, what an irony that we are looking for all these things outside. And we are making artificial buildings to look for something that provided to us in a natural building on top of our own body in the head. We, we have to just explore. To explore this, we have been given such beautiful gifts. It's, it's a great gift given to us that we can explore what is inside our head. The gift of imagination, the gift of attention, the gift of concentration of attention. What else do we need? If you have the gift of imagination, imagination takes place inside. You imagine something, you can make it real. All great things we make outside are made from imagination inside. Nobody has constructed anything or invented anything outside if it was there in the imagination inside. The source for all is all inside. Even what we have achieved outside is all based on inside. When we go into a higher level of awareness and get true knowledge, we will discover that even what we think is a universe outside is also inside, is being projected outside. We look with the eyes and we think things have to be outside before we can see. Some people see things which we can't see. With what eyes are they seeing? We say they are suffering from hallucination. They are hallucinating. Could we not be all mass hallucinating? Could we not all be doing the same thing just because we are doing it consistently in one way which we confirm with each other, therefore we are different from them? How people hallucinate? How can they see things which don't exist outside? Are they creating those things and are we not then creating? Can we find a true answer to these things? We are looking for answers to these things about inside or outside. We are going to psychologists, scientists, who are saying the truth is bound down by a certain rule and the rule prevents you from going inside. And the rule is called, we want empirical evidence, evidence outside. When you want evidence outside, you have cut off the ability to go inside and verify anything. That is why it is such a strong bonding with the outside world, our only reality. A reality has been created as an experience, very good experience.
they are experiencing this reality. Isn't it wonderful? Supposing you find out it was not real one day. It would be wonderful how we can make something so real if it was not real. It's a miracle. We are creating a reality at different levels. And when we move from one level to another, our reality changes. So when we go inside and are able to awaken ourselves to other realities, we come to know that the reality is not as real as we think. It's a relative thing. There's one reality becomes dreamlike if you wake up to another reality. That is why maybe all of them are created the same way. Maybe the dreams that we see, when we are dreaming are real, when we wake up they are not real. Maybe everything is a dream. And these are statements that some mystics have made, philosophers have made, but they have said these are not statements. These are verifiable statements. You can personally, each one of you, verify the truth of these statements. How? Go and see how consciousness works. After all, when you say, I can see, what does it mean? It means you are conscious of seeing. You are aware of seeing. If you are not aware, you don't see. Awareness and consciousness is at the basis of all our experiences. All our reality is created from awareness. So why can't we study where awareness is originating from. And if we like to study that, it's obviously happening inside, not outside. So when we want to go to the source of all experiences, at every level, we can go within and find that the source for all experiences was only one. A totality of consciousness. One source in which everything was created. A verifiable fact, verifiable by going within to that point. And what is coming in the way? Only the cover we put on ourselves for generating different levels of reality. It was just for an experience, so that consciousness can experience a variety of things to be conscious of. Therefore, we created all the mechanism within consciousness to have all these experiences. And that's what we have. What a wonderful gift to be able to do that when we are just simple human beings, so far removed from different levels of realities that which you come closer and closer to the reality you find we were knowing, knowing so little about creation itself. We think we can travel this world and see a lot. Do you know the physical world that has been created in physical material terms? is much bigger than we are seeing. Much bigger. People say, are there any aliens? They are not only aliens, there are several planets inhabited by souls. In the physical plane. We have no idea. We can't reach them. Our own body, physical material body, cannot go there. Astral body can. Causal body can go anytime, anywhere, in any forward or backward. We have facilities inside us to travel beyond where the physical body cannot travel. But we don't do it. We are not even aware of what all is inside us. So that is why we have explored very little of creation. Not even 0.1% of creation can be experienced by sitting on a planet like Earth and say, we know the whole world. You know a little worm in a drain living there thinks that the whole world. He can't think of anything outside of it. We are like that world. We think what we are seeing here, material things outside, we have uh, seen a lot. We have seen very little, extremely little. If one has the curiosity to see what all has been created by the creative power, there is so much more to see at every level. When people start exploring what is inside, they get so fascinated. People say, why should we meditate? We don't want to go anywhere. We are happy where we are. Okay, stay where you are. The worm is happy in the drain. We are happy where we are. Are we, are we any different from that? The human being is different. Human being wants to explore, no more. 
and that is why that we want to know more the opportunities for us to know way much more than we can possibly think of and just by a simple design made inside us for exploring insight from where the source of realities is coming so that is why for curious people and i am sharing this because i am a very curious person i was curious from childhood and i wanted to know answers to my question what is no what else is there if we are curious and so many of my friends are curious i am only telling them that if meditation does not give you what the ultimate aim is the minor peripheral benefits that you get are amazing for a curious person the fact that you can travel and see other galaxies of this physical universe itself is a great experience the fact you can see there are people who are in a way human because they can think and live elsewhere is true there are some people who can't they can't think they have a different type of life but they have grown there are, there are people who have grown way beyond our technological advances there are some people said way behind us and this is all based upon our knowledge of time and space and how things have been placed on time and space for billions of years and imagine the ability to move on that line of time and see things what's happening a million years ago or 3 million years ago all this is possible why i'm mentioning this not as an objective of spiritual seeking i am mentioning this that there are so many other things that happen which themselves are very attractive some people say i am very bored by meditation well at least see something start with something you'll not be bored anymore i can tell you but if you are not willing to go even beyond closing your eyes then naturally you will be bored and if you'll be just closing your eyes and waiting for something to happen in the in the current reality won't happen there are some people who meditate and get frightened i must deal with that too because we are so used to life in this body when the spiritual experience starts it almost looks like we are dying and that creates a scare and that is why it's important to go on this <coughs> spiritual program on this business very gradually and slowly so that you go step by step some people say i want to go immediately as i said in the morning yes safety even to a true but the i have seen a few people my friends i want to see at least the causal region once more i will see later okay have one vision are you ready for it yes vision came everybody is being made up over there building blocks creating human beings and the body is being made and designed for a particular destiny they are not real they are being made up how could i be spending so much time loving these people when they are just made up the shock was so great so i have to go and get some therapy for it <laughs> i'm telling you it is not a very good idea to go into an idea that gives you this kind of a shock and shocks them but if you do it gradually very slowly one step at a time and great master used to say in punjabi darja ba darja day step by step go very slow step by step and then you get accustomed to that when you get accustomed to one thing then you can know the next thing and this element of fear disappears the suggestion i am making is don't be in a hurry you don't know how long you have waited for this moment it's not a few months or a few years you waited several lifetimes sometimes you waited for so long for this thing and when you go inside you will also know how long you have waited you will able to verify that too so this business of discovering yourself is not a simple affair of just finding out some truth it's an adventure you we came down to this physical universe for adventure now we get an adventure going back to our true home but there is 
one drawback in the adventures when we try to go back. They are so good. They are so wonderful. It is like wish, wish fulfillment at the astral plane. And that has held many people at the astral plane for a long time. If you go there and stay, stabilize yourself in the upper part of the astral plane, you will find many of the people you knew are still there. Why? They are enjoying themselves there. They are more to enjoy in the astral plane than the physical world. So people get stuck there. Sometimes for hundreds of years, thousands of years, they get stuck there. So this is a drawback for ultimate realization. But if you are initiated by a perfect living master, no matter how long you want to stay anywhere, the perfect living master who initiated you stays with you and you are with him. No matter if a thousand years are taken, he will be there for a thousand years. That's the relationship with a perfect living master is different from any other relationship. There is nothing to compare it. Because it's a total personal friendship that never ends. It's eternal. And we are very different from any other friendship, any other guidance that you can get. So that is why it's the greatest thing that can happen to a person. First, to be able to see a perfect living master. And secondly, to be able to get accepted by that perfect living master and get initiated. I do not know any greater event that can take place in one's life than that. I have seen so many opportunities for great adventures, nothing like this. And then of course, if you get an opportunity to have all these experiences and then don't do anything and wait or read books, it's like getting a free ticket to go to Hawaii and spend a vacation on the Waikiki Beach and you have everything reserved. There's a suite in the pink hotel, there's a boat ready for you. You're reading about all and not going anywhere and missing your plane ticket also. It's like that. Therefore, the whole idea of following a spiritual path is to work on it and take advantage of it. Of course, it does not mean that if you don't work on it, you won't be taken home. But you will miss some things. People love to have some experiences while we are still in the human body and have non-human higher experiences. They are possible. They are possible and my suggestion is just a suggestion that if you get this opportunity, please take advantage. Enjoy it. We are not here to suffer. Suffering is a part of being here, but we are not here for suffering. We didn't come here for suffering. We came here for adventure. We came here to see new things. We came on a roller coaster force, but the roller coaster was not for suffering. What makes us suffer is our absence of knowledge of our true home and that we have left our home, true home, and we think this is our home. That's why we suffer. We suffer because all our attachments, all our bonds are with this world and not with the true home. If we kept our attachment to a true home, which you can develop while you are still a human being, if you can develop that, this will become a heavenly place for you. This, this physical world will also become heavenly, even though all the events will still be the same. You won't look at it like that. So that is why it's a very big advantage. People don't have full faith. Maybe, and that is, I'm talking because I, have, I was in that state. I had very little faith. I was a big skeptic. I grew up. I became a bigger skeptic after I got initiated. Normally, it's the other way around. That people have doubts, and when their doubts are cleared, then they become certain that we got the right thing. We waited for it. We understand it and therefore we are happy with it. I was not. Because I was born in a family to a father and mother who were already following this master. When I grew up, I had some strange experiences as a child. I could hear sounds coming. I couldn't know where they are coming. 
I could look out of window there. This was sound coming from here. It was coming from every window. I could open the house. I, I, I got frightened. What kind of sound? Nobody else could hear. I had all similar have other experiences. They all stopped when I got initiated. I had no spiritual experience of any kind when I got initiated. My grandfather took me to Great Master to get initiated. I'm sharing a personal story because it's irrelevant. He took me to Great Master and said, please give him half initiation. Great Master used to give to young children half initiation. Just tell them how to listen to the sound inside. When they grew up and were teenagers, they would come back again. He would give the second half to how to repeat Simran, how to do the arm. This was very common in his time. So my grandfather took me for half initiation, but great master held my hand and ultimately said you'll get full initiation. I was very happy to hear all that. When I came home, my parents were so delighted that I was taken for half initiation, I got full initiation. A few days later, they were very happy, rejoicing. A friend of theirs, another satsangi, follower of Great Master, came to visit us. They said, do you know, Great Master initiated my son, he sure at such a young age. They said, we are very sorry to hear that. They said, we are terribly sorry. Do you know what will happen? You caught him by surprise. And this conversation took place, I was in the next room, eavesdropping and listening to what was going on. They said, you have messed up his life. He had no chance to examine anything. As a child, you have trapped him by getting him initiated. Now what will happen? He will react so badly. When he grows up, he will react so badly. He will leave the path and say, I was just dragged into it by my father, by my grandfather. I don't believe it. I heard these words being spoken by the other satsangis to my parents and my parents were shocked at what they were saying. But I was not shocked. I said they are telling the truth. I never got a chance to examine anything. I just been taken in and given this initiation because my family was in it. Maybe it's all made up story. I am getting no experience at all. Even the little one I had before initiation disappeared. So I said, this is just a big story. These mystics, these masters make up a big story. There are many levels of awareness, there are many places, this is not our home. I don't believe any of that stuff. I have not examined anything. They say, try this, try this. But then I remembered, great master's words, when he initiated me along with others. The beginning of the initiation, he said, I am giving you something that I got from my master, Baba Jaman Singh. It has worked for me. I hope it will work for you. If it does not, you can look for something else, something better, you know, to bind you into this. It's just a method that I tried, it worked. You also tried. If it doesn't work, look for something else. I remember these words. I remember I remember these words all my life. And therefore I've looked all around. I said, I must look somewhere. I went into yogis, swamis, every type of master I could find. Went to different religions. I got converted to different religions to see where I can find the truth. I said, my master has told me, go and look for it. So I will not believe unless I can myself verify. So I became a great skeptic of everything. I said, could be all made up into a great story. Somebody has made up a big story that there are levels of consciousness and it may not be real at all. Those were days I was in school, then I was in college, and this college days I was searching everywhere and I was going everywhere. I'm missing my classes to look for the answers to my questions. It took many years. And when I examined all the opportunities that people gave, I could not find anybody at least describing the possibility of finding the truth as well as the master did. I said, now I am willing to give it a chance and see if it works. So I decided to meditate. 
meditate as hard as I can. Not two and a half hours. If necessary, eight hours a day. I tried very hard. It was very difficult to get anything. I discovered there is something holding up. If this is true, what he's saying, something should come about. So I went back, put a lot of questions to get marked. And he answered them beautifully. He answered them and I felt so convinced inside that he knows my questions before I am asking him the way he is answering. That was very impressive. That how can somebody know my questions? He must have some, some power, something in him. So therefore I began to have a, a little bit of trust that it is worthwhile trying seriously what he is saying. As I spent more time with him, his love was such. His love the way I was a child, he was a child. I was growing up, he was growing up. Every time I felt he was my age, he was so much older than me. But he behaved like he was the same age. And it's very impressive. That was very impressive for me. So gradually, it took me such a long time that one day I said I'll ask him the last questions. After I got some experience, I asked him the last question and that was in 1942. I still remember the last question I asked. It was about an experience that I had. After that, no questions were necessary. It was all what he had been saying. It was proven to the hint. What he promised, he proved to the hint by personal experience. And that is why I agree with him. You do not have to believe anything unless you can prove it to yourself, not somebody else's proof. People can tell you anything. It doesn't mean you got it. If they got it, they got it. You didn't get it. But the opposite of that is also true. That if you haven't got something, don't deny it that it does not exist because you didn't get it. Till you can experiment, do what you, what you can. Here are such simple methods. This is a very simple method of discovering the truth. It's a little hard. Method is very simple. Who has made it simple? A, a sign, a mystic named Bullesha. Bullesha in Punjabi says, Rabada ki paana, etho putana ette Simple, one method. It's not difficult to find God. Put your attention from here, over here. Which is the truth. That's the whole truth. It's all a game of putting attention inwards instead of outwards. How simple it is. Looks so simple. What makes it hard and difficult is not the simplicity of the, of the method. What makes it hard is our hard attachments. Our hard natured desires for things that are external to us. Not in and our mind thinking of nothing else but those things outside. And we constantly think of them. We cannot put our attention inside. There is nothing difficult to understand. It's very simple. The whole game is put your attention inside. And attention is the only thing you have in awareness. Which you can handle and put it where you like. Nothing else. You can't change awareness. You are here in awareness. You are sitting in the hall. You are aware there is a hall. You are aware there are people sitting. You are aware I am talking. That's it. But attention, you can place wherever you like. You like these flowers, you put your attention on the flower. You like to listen to me, you can put attention on me. You can put attention on your neighbor who is sitting there. Attention can move. Nothing else can. That's wonderful that we have been given something that we can place wherever we like. We have constantly placed our attention on things outside. So why not place it inside? There's some little bit of belief that is that there's nothing inside. I don't know how it came up, but somehow the reason why it came up was, okay, how do you put attention inside? Close your eyes. When we close our eyes, it's dark. We open our eyes, we can see there's nothing inside. How can you hold your attention in the darkness by closing your eyes when everything that is visible is outside? So this is a little handicap to start with. 
and that is why it is it takes time to develop the ability to start seeing inside actually we do it all the time when we imagine things when we imagine things where do we imagine inside there is nothing outside we can imagine supposing you want to imagine a nice blue car standing outside how many of you can imagine there is a blue long car sitting outside how many of you can imagine all of you you are all not good meditators <laughs> that's all that's required now you have to imagine that you are sitting outside how many of you can imagine that that you are sitting outside you are all going to be very successful in meditation how many of you can imagine you are sitting inside your head you are all very good that's all that is required you are placing your attention it's a simple thing what you are using is your imagination and your attention and then the third thing that is very good which is given to us as a gift is that you can concentrate your attention it's not merely placing attention you can concentrate your attention wherever you like so when you concentrate your attention inside you begin to withdraw your awareness from outside that's simple as that and when that happens things begin to open up and begin to you can begin to see things begin to hear things it's automatic it's already there we are not seeing and hearing those at this time because our attention is on there the whole experience is generated by attention so that is why the method is also very simple that we have to put attention inside the means given to us are very simple imagination imagine you are there and some people have a hard time finding out where is there they say when you say put your attention there where is there you say third eye center okay i'm going to search for my third eye center no need to search when you are awake you are at third eye center you can't be anywhere else when you are awake and in a human body at wakeful state you are operating your conscious self from a third eye center so why do you have to focus look for it you know where you are if somebody were to say are you sitting on a chair in your body yes i know it where i am sitting the same thing where are you sitting i am sitting my head but why is it difficult to feel that you are sitting there and easier to feel i am sitting on a chair because you are completely identifying the self with the body you are completely identifying the self and the body sitting on a chair just move a little bit from there no body is something i am sitting in just this one thing body is something i am sitting in in the head of this body then close your eyes where am i sitting sitting behind the eyes right in the center you are already there it just to imagination is merely used in order to put the attention there because when we imagine something inside it's easy to put attention there so withdraw the attention inside is the only secret when you are there you can put attention more inside during the meditation exercises i go beyond what we used to normally do with the past i ask people to sing i ask people to dance we didn't dance too much but we sat and talked to master too much or other thing we did inside to stabilize our attention inside here you can do anything so long as you feel it's happening or inside where you are sitting in the center of the head so long as you can generate experiences even imaginative experiences of being in the center of the head you are pulling your attention there after a while you will feel that's what you really are and you are being surrounded by your body it's natural this spiritual path this shuddha sabd yoga taught by great master is not some anything artificial it's completely natural it is built into us by nature they say there is a hot yoga yoga obstinacy stand upside on your head stand in the river with one leg for a long time all the trying to control our mind by defying it by trying to do things that the body doesn't want to do that is this yoga of stubbornness 
fruits of the yoga is not at all like that. It's a natural yoga. Sahaj yoga. Sahaj means natural. It comes natural to us. Imagination is natural. Attention is natural. Concentration of attention is natural. All natural faculties we are using just to discover what is inside, what is outside. And compare what is inside with outside. These are simple factors. I'd like to continue uh, this discussion with you on simplification. I'd like to simplify, demystify the mystery that is being made out of the spiritual path. It's not as mystery as we think. It's mysterious because we haven't seen it. It's mysterious because we don't know how to see it. It's mysterious because we think the body is our self, our reality. It's mysterious because we think the world only is real, nothing else is. These assumptions are made it mysterious. But when you explore, nothing will be mysterious. You'll be able to find all this. I'll continue my conversation with you. And to make it more simple, tomorrow when we meet, I want to finish this now because there are a large number of people who are meeting for the first time. And I want to give them time for personal meeting. And I hope you'll appreciate that. So I'd like to see all of those who come for the first time and give them some personal time. So thank you very much once again for listening to me so attentively. We'll see you tomorrow at 11 o'clock.